Okay, so in this video, we will discuss the identity matrix. The question is, is there a matrix that plays the role of the real number 1? We have already seen a zero matrix that plays the role of the real number 0. Now, is there a matrix that plays the role of the real number 1? And the answer is yes, and it is called the identity matrix. Let's look at a few examples, and then we'll prove that this matrix does indeed play the role of the real number 1. Take the matrix A to be, say, a 2 by 2 matrix, 2, negative 3, 5, 6. And we will call this matrix I, and I will choose I, in this case, to be a 2 by 2 matrix with 1's on the main diagonal and zeros off the main diagonal. Let's compute A times I and I times A and see what the result is. So if we do A times I, A is a 2 by 2, I here is a 2 by 2, so the result will be also a 2 by 2 matrix. And let's see. Let's form the first row by fixing the first row of A. We'll have 2 times 1, 2, plus 0, 2. Second entry, 2 times 0, 0, plus negative 3, negative 3. So the first row has stayed the same. Look at the second row now of the product A times I. 5 times 1, 5, plus 6 times 0, 0, 5 plus 0, 5. 5 times 0, 0, plus 6 times 1, 6. And so the matrix is the same. A times I equals A. What about the other direction? If we had multiplied A times I, whoops, I times A, then we get 1, 0, 0, 1, times matrix A, 2, negative 3, 5, 6. Once again, both are 2 by 2 matrices. The result is a 2 by 2 matrix. To construct the first row, we fix the first row of the first matrix. And we'll have 2 plus 0, 2. Then negative 3 plus 0, negative 3. To construct the second row, we fix the second row of the first matrix, which will give us 0 plus 5, 5. 0 plus 6, 6. And the result is once again equal to A. So for a 2 by 2, this matrix behaves like the real number 1. If you think of the defining property of the real number 1, it is the following. 1 times any real number A equals A, and A times the real number 1 also equals A. That is the defining property of the real number 1. And this matrix here, 1, 0, 0, 1, has the same property, at least for 2 by 2 matrices. A times I equals A, I times A equals A. Now this also works for rectangular matrices, although in just one direction. Suppose that the matrix A now, say was a 2 by 3 matrix. You say, well, let's see if we can multiply A on the left by a matrix that will leave A unchanged. Well, because A is a 2 by 3 matrix, once again, I will be a 2 by 2 matrix. And let's compute I times A and see that we indeed get A back. I is a 2 by 2 here, A is a 2 by 3, 2 equals 2, so we have a defined multiplication, and the result will be a 2 by 3 matrix, same size as A. Let's see if we get the same entries. To construct the first row, we fix the first row of I, and we go through every column, so we get 2 plus 0, 2, then we get negative 3 plus 0, negative 3, and finally 8 plus 0, 8. So row 1 
stayed the same. What about row 2? 0 plus 5, 5. 0 plus 6, 6. And 0 plus 1, 1. And you see we get the matrix A back. Now you may ask, well, what if we wanted to do A times I? Well, clearly it can't be the same I. Because then we'd have a 2 by 3 matrix that we would try to multiply with a, on the right, 2 by 2. And as 2 and 3 are not equal, the multiplication is not defined. So you cannot perform this matrix times this matrix. Well, we can still ask the same question, though. Could we find perhaps a different matrix where A times the matrix would be A back? Well, if this is to work, we need no longer a 2 by 2 matrix, but a 3 by 3 matrix instead. And you say, well, okay, for a 2 by 2, if i equals this, what about a 3 by 3? Well, it will be the same thing, 1's on the main diagonal, zeros everywhere else. So let's try this out and see if it does work. So here we take i to be now the so-called 3 by 3 identity matrix. So 1's on the main diagonal, zeros everywhere else. So for values off the main diagonal. And now let's try and compute no longer i times a, where here i was 2 by 2, but now a times i, where i is 3 by 3, and see what we get. So matrix A, 2, negative 3, 8, 5, 6, 1, times now this new identity matrix, that is a 3 by 3, so 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. So let's check that everything is well defined. A is a 2 by 3, I now is a 3 by 3, 3 equals 3, multiplication is defined, and the new matrix will be also a 2 by 3 matrix, same size as A. So far, so good. Well, to construct the first row of the matrix, we fix the first row of A. So we'll get 2 plus 0 plus 0, which is 2. Then we'll get 0 minus 3 plus 8, minus 3. And finally, for the first row, 0 plus 0 plus 8, 8. And so we get the first row back. For the second row, well, we fix the second row of A, and we get 5 plus 0 plus 0, 5. 0 plus 6 plus 0, 6. 0 plus 0 plus 1, 1. And we get, once again, A back. And so you see it works the same for non-square matrices. The only difference is the I on the left and on the right will be of different sizes. On the left, I had to be 2 by 2. On the right, I had to be 3 by 3. But the result is the same. I times A equals A times I equals the original matrix. And so we call this matrix the identity matrix. In general, how do we define it? Right? If it were 4 by 4, it would be a 4 by 4 matrix where all the entries would be 0 except for 1's on the main diagonal. If it were 5 by 5, it would be a matrix where all the entries are 0 except for 1 on the main diagonal. Well, how do we write this very concisely? And here's how we do it. So we write i n by n, just so that it is an n by n matrix, being the identity matrix, and we simply write i the size will usually be implied. So this is the so-called n by n identity matrix. And how is it defined? Well, so defined by simply the entries, right? All the entries are either 0 or 1, and they're really easy to locate. Ones are on the main diagonal, zeros everywhere else. And we can easily specify this. So we look at an entry of our matrix in the ith row, jth column, and the entries, there are only two possible entries. Either the entries are one, or they are zero. 
if? In which case do we get 1? In which case do we get 0? Well, think of it. You get a 1 if you are on the main diagonal. So this is the entry 1, 1, row 1, column 1. This is the entry 2, 2, row 2, column 2. This is the entry 3, 3, row 3, column 3. So you can only be on the main diagonal if the row index i equals the column index j. So if i equals j, if the row index equals the column index, you are on the main diagonal, the entry must be a 1. Well, for any other entry off the main diagonal, therefore opposite of i equals j, this i is not equal to j. If the row index is not equal to the column index, you are off the main diagonal, and the result must be an entry equal to 0. And this is how we define i. Let us now prove that if we take for simplicity an n by n square matrix, that indeed a times i equals i times a equals a. So that if you multiply a matrix by i, you get the original matrix back, just as the case of the real number 1. If you multiply a real number by 1 from either direction, you get the original real number back. So let's prove this. So we will take A to be an arbitrary square matrix, so an n by n matrix, and we will let I be, of course, the n by n identity matrix. Well, let's look at what we want to show. We want to prove that if we do the matrix A times matrix I, or matrix I times matrix A, we get the original matrix back. And that is the defining property of the identity matrix. We are simply going to prove the first equality, that A times I equals A. And I will leave as an exercise the proof that I times A equals A as it is a copy-paste of the proof of AI equals A. So first, we have to prove that both have the same size. Well, A is an n by n matrix. I is an n by n. Multiplication is defined. The result is a n by n matrix. And so A times I is an n by n matrix. And I was by assumption an n by n matrix. So it's clear that a i and a have the same size. Both are n by n matrices. Well, to prove equality, we need to prove that both also have the same corresponding entries. So we will take an arbitrary entry of matrix a i, say in the ith row, jth column, and prove that the entry of matrix a i in the ith row, jth column is the same as the entry of A in the i-th row jth column. Well, if you remember, how do we find the entry in row i column j of a product between two matrices? We take the i-th row of A times the jth column of i. So we take entries in the i-th row of A, jth column of i, and how do we multiply a row times a column? We multiply corresponding entries, so 1 with 1, 2 with 2, 3 with 3 in general, k with k, and we add them up. Now the question is, what do we do with this sum? Well, if you think back, there are only two possible values for the entry of matrix i. Either this is a 1 or it is a 0. But i and j are fixed and k will vary from 1, 2, 3, 4, up to n. So k will always be different than j, except for the one time where k equals j. So the idea is, let's add over all the values of k that are different from j, which is all the case for 1. So then we get a i k, i k j. But now we've missed out a term. Right, we've added over all possible k values, except the one time when k was equal to j. So we have to add this leftover term. 
Well, if k is j, the term will be a i j i j j. And now what we have is basically trivial. If k is different than j, then the row index and the column index are different, and so we are off the main diagonal, therefore the entry in i is equal to zero always. So we're summing all zeros because whatever the value of a i k is, the entry of a in the i throw k column, multiply by zero, the result is always zero. So we're summing all zeros, so the whole sum is simply zero. And if you look here, the entry in i in the j throw j column, now we are on the main diagonal, and so the entry is simply equal to one. So we are left here with a i j times one, which is simply the entry in matrix A in the i throw j column. And so we're left with what we wanted. The entry in the i throw j column of matrix A times i equals, well, zero, plus a i j. And this is our conclusion. The entry of A in the i throw j column. And so you see that a i and a have the same size, and they also have the same corresponding entries. The entry in matrix AI in the i throw j column is the same as the entry in matrix A in the i throw j column. So we have a conclusion that indeed, because AI and A have the same size and the same corresponding entries, they are therefore equal as matrices. And this completes the proof. To prove that i times a also equals a, the second part of our statement, you simply have to copy paste this short proof. And that's it. So now we have our two matrices, the zero matrix, which behaves like the zero real number, and the identity matrix, which behaves like the real number one. Multiply any matrix by i from either side, and you get back the original matrix.